without a bar. Welcome to 3 PNR. I'm your host, Adam R. And with me this evening is Ben Vonderheide. Ben, how are you doing, sir? Excellent. Good. Ben, before we dive in. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, sir. Before we dive in, let's talk about uh, what put you on this path. Well, um, I didn't know I was on the path till I was deep into the woods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, many years ago, I was... It was an attempt to recruit me into the intelligence community by two individuals, one of whom was Bill Diamonds. And while I wasn't interested in the offer, me and Bill became friends. He was a wild character. And he would best be described as the... Bill Brown, that's the guy life. from the UFO Hunters, yeah? Bill Burns is from UFO Hunters. Yeah, yeah. That, that name sounded familiar Bill, to me. Bill Diamonds. Bill that's Diamonds, Bill different. Bur okay, that's who I was thinking of. Go ahead. Oh, it's my mistake. Bill Diamonds. Uh, we did... Uh, I met Bill Burns and showed him the stones. Maybe that was flashing in my head. But Bill Diamonds was one of the individuals who approached me, and he would best be described as the true-to-life individual, which was represented by Leonardo DiCaprio in Blood Diamonds. And Bill had gone into the jungle many years before and seeking diamonds and had gained a great deal of respect and, and a position of honor within the jungle and was also uh, working with our government for intelligence purposes. And as a byproduct of working with Bill, um, I was introduced to various artifacts that they that were coming out of the jungles, the bush as they call it. And one of those were the Nomali stones, which I'd never seen, but I was definitely attracted to so I acquired more and more of them over many years from him and uh, his his associates and connections. And uh, that's how I got into the Nomali. They're carved figurines discovered in the earth, um, most often buried randomly in the jungles of West Africa. They are, <clears throat> excuse me, have been extremely well suppressed to the point where I'm confident, Adam, that you are likely the first contact to most, if not all, of the people in your circle of influence that are listening tonight. In other words, uh, most of them will have never heard of the Nomali, no matter how in, in tune they are with these matters, because they have been so effectively suppressed. Yeah, I would agree. Um after first reaching out to you, I did some some uh, research on them, and there's there's a lot to it. It's 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 more than just ancient carvings. Uh, the properties of those of those stones have some sort of effect that they're I think they're going to study, right? Yeah, we are well underway of being the first that I know to utilize Nomali in the United States and apply them, activate them, if you will, and to follow the results sometimes even on film. Yeah. You know, um, I was listening, well, reading more, more reading about it. And one of them were having some abnormal reactions to, uh, was it a, I can't remember the, the instrument now, not a Geiger counter, something, something of that nature, something maybe with magnetics. Uh, and I found that interesting. Um, and then there's something direct relation to the ancient aliens with that. What, what is the connection between the ancient aliens and uh, the Mali? Well, the tribal belief is that the Nomoli were gods who lived amongst the stars. And as a consequence of misbehavior, they were probably like you and me, I don't know, they were banished to Earth, <laughs> forced to live here. And, the proving uh, ground. <laughs> they lived amongst the natives the in far gone days. And they were huge figures with loud voices so loud that or, or, or tra the transmitted from one village to another village far away. We don't know if it was through a loud or whether it was some other form of transmitting. And their eyes were like looking into the sun. And they blessed the people with their, they lived amongst the people and blessed them with these stones. Huh. You know, so how many of them do you have in collection now? 
Oh, I don't know exactly, but I've got some dozens of them. I want to get some of those. <laughs> yeah, we actually have made some available. They, we, when I found out that very few people knew about them, and when I recognized the rarity and the importance of our collection was when we did find someone who knew about him, Professor Kwaku Afoyanza, who had been the art professor at Howard University, very prestigious university. He was born in Ghana. And he knew of them, and, and when he saw the collection, was excited and invited us to exhibit them at the African Art Museum of Maryland, a really, really cool group of people down there and a fine, fine representation of African art. And so we did exhibit them. Initially, it was going to be a shorter exhibit, but it was well received and continued for a couple of years. But the whole time, Adam, we, you know, myself and others, recognize that these stones are best not kept on shelves in museums, that they were designed with specific purposes. They were given to the natives with specific purposes and that they were utilized by the shamans, the medicine men, the medicine women, the chiefs, and sometimes individuals or entire groups of individuals who were seeking the blessing. And having been suppressed, they are not uh, blessing humans as much as they could. And so we are making a number of them available and have already placed a number of them into the hands of individuals who use them for to have dynamic and profound impact on their lives. And in a couple of cases to those healers who use them in the healing process. Yeah, that's one individual who researches neutrinos, which are nanoparticles, a professor, she's using one in her work. And uh, yeah, so we're, that's, uh, that's that, the connection to the ancient aliens. That's what I read about those. They had the, the properties of them uh, have healing factors. Cause I, I read that a lot of like stones, like, um, like clear quartz crystal and smoky quartz and, I hear a lot of that. And then when I hear about these stones and the more I read about them, there's a lot of connection to them with uh, people using them for even for meditation purpose. Right. And if you think about the human brain, our computer and how powerful it is, you know, I have this belief that earth is a, it's, it's a proving ground for us. You know, we're here to prove ourselves. And if you look at the cosmic web and I say this a lot, but ever since I discovered the connections of the cosmic web, it lets me know there's a source, like something, that, uh, some sort of, some sort of architect in a sense, and perhaps maybe these stones, the carvings, the, the stones are more powerful, and the carvings made them more interesting. Is that about fair to say? Well, yes, and def they def defined them. In other words, I'm sitting here looking at some stones, and I'm looking at one. They range from humanistic in the art rep rendering to a fully nomali image of what the gods were said to have looked like. And so I'm looking now at one that is a, a nomali. It has the features of the nomali gods. And um, that would be for one purpose. And I'm looking at another one on the other end of the spectrum right now, turn my head and I see the divine mother, a um, humanistic form with, of a mother feeding her child. And that would have been, as an example for you, that would have been used in the center of the village. It would be for both for, if you will, um, direction and a, a focal point, and also for the healing of. So uh, in other words, if you've got mothers who are uh, pregnant or having children and have early younger children, there was a high mortality rate so they would go and seek the blessing of this stone. But simultaneously, as I've been let, as I've been made, made to understand, is that they would honor the value of mothers in the civilization, in the community, in the tribe, and remind people, remind all those in the tribe that they are to respect and to support mothers and their children. So a combination. And then we've got uh, others. I'm looking at another one, which is a diamond divining stone. 
specifically utilized to seek fortune, if you will, but also can be utilized to divine and to find your way through meditation, etc., to to whether to find your way in life, in love, or in other regards. So like a sense of enlightenment then? Sense of enlightenment there. Then I'm looking at uh, <clears throat> other ones which are combinations of, well, I'm looking at a couple of them that have, um, there aren't a lot of them, but there are a couple that have the elongated heads, similar to other figurines from around the world we've seen that are said to potentially represent elongated head um, in, of beings from long ago. Yeah, that was very commonplace in, in the uh, in ancient man. Uh, and it makes me wonder, what, what were we trying to mimic to do that, right? That's not something I, I would imagine no one in the ancient times sat around saying, well, I'm going to make my head longer. I mean, there would have to be right. some kind of reason they would do this, something that they observed anyway, that made them, uh, everything ancient man's ever done was something they depicted that was divine, whether it be something they witnessed, something they believed, or something they were taught. I don't think they would do that on their own accord. And hearing that these stones, the figurines have those same elongate, elongated heads, I mean, there's got to be a source to that. Yes, and only a few of them, and I don't understand, my understanding is there's not a history of elongated heads in that region, in humans. But uh, yes, for whatever reason, uh, these, some of these, very few of them are have the representation of the elongated heads. So they are, you know, they'll be for fertility, they'll be for uh, victory, they'll be for prosperity, they'll be for healing, they'll be the Mahanyadi variation, which is the chief stone, and those are designed to incorporate the powers of the Namali gods, and often they will have some humanistic image uh, representation in there also, because as with most, or many if not most societies throughout history, it was believed that if the chief or the ruler was connected to the gods that the prosperity and fortune and health would spread through the civilization and if they were not connected to the gods they would suffer accordingly so during the enskinment or in the indoctrination of a new chief they would again use these stones to invite and represent and to bless the new chief with these godly attributes. So I'm wondering if, I don't know, I'm wondering if there's something in connection with deities. Because the more I hear about it, and the more I read about it, it, again, you know, not to play a broken record, but humanity's got a, a habit of creating things in, in a, from what it is we witnessed that's incredible. Um, so I wonder if some of that plays a role in it. You, uh, I mean, I'm, there's got to be, there's definitely other people that have these stones in America, right? Oh, yes. There are people who have had them. They were first fa identified by outside of Africa. The Portuguese sailors in the 1400s were the first to see them. They were first written about in 1855, and Thompson, Thompson on Africa out of New York, was a publication that had some little bit about them. And then and uh, you know, up until the another 1894, 1906, 1917, Walter Edwin wrote a few pages in his book, which were very interesting uh, about the Nomali. They were widely popular throughout the world. In fact, <clears throat> by 1917, he mentioned that there was some contention that they were making them in the Orient fraudulently and bringing them to Africa to sell them because they have become so popular that the real ones weren't available. And there are thousands of, of what you would call, um, you know, replicas. Right. And some, and, and I mean, if you look on anywhere on eBay and et cetera, you'll find those that are not authentic and ancient artifacts. So, and, it, and the, we also know that the British royalty, the Kwaku advised me, has a huge collection of Nomali stones in the palace. Are they, and, uh, so yes. Are there, have there been any studies that anyone has taken these stones to, to maybe enhance their luck and or their, their, their health? I mean, is there any studies that kind of support that? <clears throat> I think since they've been suppressed, there have not been 
activated widely. I can tell you that when we, my son, Quinn, worked with me on this, and when we first decided to get out and and uh, and Kwaku asked us to work on a book, the first book of Nomali, if you will, modern times, and he asked us to work on it, we did an outreach to the internet. And then we did shows, the international or the uh, gem show up out of New York City, the MUFON shows, mutual uh, United, uh, the uh, MUFON United uh, UFO shows, and we did uh, other shows. And we found that <clears throat> not one person had ever heard of the Nomali. As you say, people were aware of the vibrational patterns of crystals and all varieties of stones. They were familiar with many things, but out of all those people who are the foremost and walk through those shows, not one of them. And when we were at the Muf MUFON show, uh, Bill Burns was the speaker to one uh, we went to, and he, after the, he spoke, came out, and I showed him the stones, <clears throat> and even he had never seen the Nomali stones. Yeah, till you, uh, you know, when I was doing my, my homework and finding, uh, you know, some interesting guests, and I saw, I looked up what you had, it's really hard to find videos and, and uh, literature on it. It's not easy. Like, when, yeah, no, the, the exception was in the 19, early 90s. Right. Angelo Petoni. And um, uh, in Unsolved Mysteries, they did a, a piece on him and the stone he found, which uh, ended up having a ball bearing in the, in the, in the stomach, and mm. uh, which was uh, eventually identified as having chromium in it, which is, of course, very interesting. It was found in strata that was uh, 12,000 years old. And... Um, yeah, so that was, <clears throat> excuse me, that was done in the 1990s. But from then until um, I surfaced with this promoting and uh, with the Nomali rise, and that you're now introducing these people there, it has been essentially nothing, which is very, very interesting. Yeah, you know, um, one of the things I read about I, I hear, I imagine anyway, that a lot of healers, psychics, people like that are trying to get their hands on it because, you know, ordinary crystals so far that I know, they don't conduct electricity, but when they're heated and in certain elements that they, they do do something that's abnormal. What that is, I'm, it's, I'm still learning about that. Okay. Wait, so <clears throat> I guess I, a, a good question would be, where could people like myself or anyone else get the, like, acquire one of these stones? Well, you know, they could reach out to me through ancientalienstones.com and uh, we could see if we've got one of the, uh, <clears throat> see if we've got one of the stones in, in, available now that would fit their connection. We, we find that if people see a stone and they connect to it, it's immediate. You can see the, you can see the uh, energy light up in them and they know right away that that's the stone that they were destined to acquire. And a lot of that too is what the mind, the human condition is being optimistic. Anything you're going to possess in your life, even if it's, let's say on a hypothetical, a wizard shows up to your house, gives you a staff. It's legitimately a powerful staff, but it's worthless in, in the hands of someone who doesn't believe in it or they don't put any kind of strength behind it. Yes. You have to, uh, that's a big thing with focus. When you want to have that, that X factor, you want to be really good at what it is you're doing, whether it be playing pool or boxing or something like that. You gotta, you gotta control the the computer, your brain. That's gotta, because that's a powerful instrument. Our, uh, our brain is the most complex computer right now on the world because it's it's doing an amazing amount of things, recreations in the mind, sight, thought, um, all these things that that can't be replicated right now. Anyway, I'm, right now it can't be replicated, but eventually, you know, maybe maybe I, I guess there. But well, I, and I would say that not only does our brain functioning on these levels that we may not be fully aware of, but also our heart, if you will, our heart center is active and has a power. And above all those, our spiritual power and connection. It's my understanding from what I've seen that the stones are powerful in and of themselves, but the activating of the stone, the activation by an individual, uh, as you say, someone who is in tune 
and has the ability to fire them up, get the engine started. The combination, so, you know, it's, humans have all these great powers and that God has given us to help each other, to bless each other. And he's also given us unlimited amount of tools out throughout this planet and in the non-physical realm too that we can use to do the, the fulfill our purpose. And these are one of those tools that are designed for certain people. And it'll enhance their ability to heal or to change their own lives. As uh, I've witnessed, there are people who have made, again, profound impact upon their own lives in physical, emotional, and mental, and spiritual realms by connecting to and activating a stone, meditating with it, placing it on parts of their body that hurt. Um, yes. You know, I wonder if there's a, may, maybe, maybe someone you know, like an experiment where you get a group of people, almost like, you know, like when you're using a new trial medication, give each person one of these stones, a couple of them, maybe a not real one and look for the, the placebo effect um, and see how many of those people that, that are already optimistic versus the pessimistic and who has the better succession thereafter. That would be an interesting study. Well, we're in a very amazing opportunity in times because Again, unlike anything else or many other things out there, we know that these have never been studied. So anything that anything that we do is going to be the first time it's done. And that's really uh, very exciting. So that from a scientific perspective, from a healing perspective, from a spiritual meditation perspective, we have touched on those. If you look at the ancient aliens, uh, ancient alien stones uh, website, you'll see we have a a short video from the first ever group meditation that we know of down in America. It was a random group of people who came to a presentation I did at the New Hope Metaphysical Association. And when they got in a large circle around a stone, it was very powerful. And then you'll also see video with these new cameras, which I do not understand, Adam, but they pick up uh, some higher level energies. And with my friend Jeff, the village mystic in Bradenton, Florida, using Nomali to do healings. And you pick up these images. And uh, so, yes, and Jeff has been using them for some years now to do healings. And uh, so, again, we have some footage. And then, as you, if you looked at the site, you also may have noticed that we funded and uh, inspired and that's uh, an, uh, a, 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 a group to go into the jungle, an expedition, if you will, right? to go in because when I was on the Ancient Aliens television show, they contacted me when they were editing and they said, he, do you know of anybody with pictures? or video of the stones in the bush being used. And I said, well, I'm pretty sure there aren't gonna be any for a variety of reasons, which I don't have to go into, uh, but there are you know, a variety of reasons why that would not have happened. It could have, but I don't was unaware of it. And again, it would not be something that I would expect. So they looked, they had their team look and they came back with the same findings that there were no pictures, and no videos. So we, sent our guy and now initially he was told that they would not accept him with the cameras on the first trip that that would be exploratory only and to establish the ability to bring in a camera but then we negotiated and they were willing to let him take one cell phone camera into the bush that's now who, that who's camera. establishing those rules well, that's the chiefs and the, the chiefs. And the okay, so leaders. so for and respectfully, I, I guess I understand them not wanting modern technology in, in their in their in their camps. I mean, I get that. Well, it's a com combination of things. One, the the again, the stones are very um, suppressed. The two dominant factors over there, the most dominant is the the radical Muslim groups, and they will certainly destroy stones. They will harm people if they find them practicing traditional um, spiritual beliefs. And yeah, and if you want proof of that, look what they did in Iraq 
to all those exactly. ancient stri- that was horrible a lot of so, history lost a lot of history lost and that's exactly what we're what you'd be dealing with over there which is part of the suppression and yes yeah, so they would certainly destroy them and the other thing is in the areas that we're talking about as it was stated to me at one time the only people who come in here with cameras are the government so they still that and that's not some they're not a uh, government they would say this adam it's interesting they would say you know free, there's freetown as example and sierra leone is the capital and they would say to have said to me you know mr ben people would say that they have owned and ruled our country as an example england would say they ruled it and, and owned it he says but none of them ever come here right yeah. <laughs> so truth. they stay yeah. over there in freetown and and act like they run the jungle he said you know he was told you know my my friends over there are mendingos or mendes and mendingos as the as you may have remember the television series roots yeah is about mendingos and and my friend would say that the chief says that we have ruled the bush for 10,000s of years and you know what they're kind of saying in regard is you know these guys might say they run the country in freetown but if they come over here they could be alligator or crocodile food you know <laughs> honestly <laughs> you know they don't have any power over here they they can't even make it out here you know yeah and it's what so, it's it may, i mean they're flying a flag via un to stop opposing countries from going there doing whatever they want i mean i kind of get that but still what they're saying is yeah we've been doing this for tens of thousands of years the rules here don't apply to us to apply to you the same way they apply to us and it's a survival thing you know yes part of that suppression when i'm hearing suppression i'll tell you what i think first thing that comes to mind why would a government suppress the information one typically when something exhibits uh, supernatural or unknown or parallel to the normal um powers or or, or compositions yeah they suppress that because they don't know enough about it and they're already not a government they're not good enough to say well we don't know they're not good enough to do that they suppress other also though part of the suppression i imagine you don't want people going in there to you know you know how humanity is we find that there's a precious resource somewhere they're going to bum rush that place and those people are going to become victims because that's just the nature of humanity it's sad to say um so yeah those two things play play a part in it, I think. Uh, suppression is, you know, not known enough well, and, and a combination of kind of protecting the resources of that area. Well, specifically in this regard, you, you know, we have to recognize that the separation of church and state is not necessarily enforced in these countries. So well, that's true, too. Not only that, but economically, if you want to succeed in... I'm in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, and there's a term they say, rhino, Republican in name only. And many people would say that they become Republican because they want to succeed in business. And this is a heavily Republican county. So, I mean, that's just a, a slight example. But in a country like this, if you want to succeed, you should be Muslim because that's what's the ruling class. Now, if you take another example, let's just take one other example uh, from political. Let's take the other point, which most people would not think of, is that these countries do not want to be perceived as uncivilized right. and primitive. They want to be perceived as modern. And so these type of things are not what they're, they're, they're promoting. They also, from a medical perspective, they don't want the people believing these things. They want them using vaccines. They want them using doctors. And some of that is a very good reason because modern medicine certainly can, can help people out. And, and some of the beliefs... They well, that's even that's even been exampled in the modern medicine. I mean, like there's recent things going on, especially with COVID, where there's a medication that's been around since the seventies that works just as fine. In fact, it, it shows better success. But it was you didn't hear a word of it throughout the entire pandemic. The, mm-hmm. the vaccine was pushed. I, I mean, I, I'm not a political person. I don't really get into that. But, but hearing that disappointed me greatly. Mm-hmm. And it's because it's a cheaper medicine and it's easier to manufacture. You know, you would think that would be the one at the front lines. You think that would be the front line medication. In this case, if you have stones that are healing, that's free. <laughs> that's even worse that's, for pharmacology. That's something. Yeah. yeah, you could you could actually uproot an entire system by by doing. It. So well, and sadly, the other thing is that there are untold millions of descendants from this region that came over they were enslaved and and came over long ago and they were separated from their spiritual history and their ancestry 
And over the years, it's been demonized and they have little respect in many cases and no connection to their historical, again, ancestral, spiritual beliefs because they've been told that they're not uh, legit and that they are uncivilized and primitive. Meanwhile, but, Scientology gets a write-off, right? <laughs> well, well, yeah. In the meantime, as you know, there are many findings that the old people of old had recipes and formulas that did work and it did heal people with whether it's medicinal plants from the jungle or whatever it is that they use it a lot of stuff was right on so to discount the entirety of a history of a spiritual belief. so what i was getting to is the the individuals i work with from deep in the, in the bush are very happy and excited to know that we are presenting these stones as they are as blessings to humanity as blessings to people and as valuable, and that their spiritual beliefs are as, as righteous as anybody else's, and they have a right to believe in the things they do, and that there's power and, uh, and healing in the things that they ascribe to. Their superhuman strengths being witnessed across the world constantly. Just we miss it. We don't pay attention. You know, I call that having the X, the X factor, right? There's like, the, we've seen it in athletes, right? You know, back in the 90s, Michael Jordan, that guy was, it was incredible watching. You know, well, well I guess the Michaels, Mike, Mike Tyson, uh, mm -hmm. Floyd Mayweather. The point I make is people have super abilities currently. Um, it's a matter of focus. And then when it comes to healing and energy, I, like I was telling you earlier, I think, I think people are, we're, we're all energy at the end of the day. You know, our computer, our brain, the, the neuros are runs in air. Uh, if you look at a cosmic web, and I refer, I, I, can't, I re referenced the cosmic web because when you really look at that and then you look at a construct of the human brain, a lot of similarities, and I, ha I have to believe, and, you know, my personal belief, and I said this a lot, I'm sorry for those who hear it, but I say it a lot, I think our soul and our consciousness are one and the same. It's just energy. And then you talk about materials that could conduct or or manipulate energy. It makes prime sense to me that you could put, you know, some sort of power into something that could help the energy that already exists. I mean, I I, I don't doubt anything. I don't know enough to doubt anything. All right, I, I, I tend to learn more. On that ancient alien show, what what were they covering on that show regarding this? Like, what were the points they were trying to drive? Well, they really. Um... The, their interest in Nomali was very specific. The show, that episode, which uh, aired just yesterday, again, it's one of the, it was rated as one of their better episodes. Uh, well, well done. And again, the first since 1992 television coverage, and this time, of course, a much broader coverage of it, anything to do with Nomali, but their connection or their show was focused on the Dogon tribe of Mali, which is the adjoining country to um, Sierra Leone, Guinea, and Liberia, where these stones come from. And at one point in time, the Mali Empire encroached into those territories. And myself and my son had, in our research, identified a potential connection between the Nomali and the Dogon and uh, presented it to them. And that was their that what they're interested in the dogon the gods of the dogon who descended from the heavens in a whirling uh, thunderous vessel and came out were called the nomos hmm. and the nomos of mali where they were from so we identified it was in the they were amphibious uh, the huh. Nomali, I'm looking at one right now, a Mahanyadi version of variety that has a crocodile crawling up the back, and that was uh, represented frequently. The crocodiles were venerated, and the Nomali gods were said to have a connection to the crocodile. They were also venerated because they could hunt on the ground and in the water. But the Nomos of Mali, uh, we contended could inevitably been 
translated from Nomos of Mali to Nomoli. Yeah, I mean, I guess I could see that. You know, like uh, this ancient Sumerians, those tablets where they depict the universe long before there was any ability to even look out there. Uh, what yes. are the? I, I never inquired. What do those tablets mean? They're, I think they're just stone, right? I don't. I'm not familiar with the content. If, the if, it, I, I'm curious to know if the stones, the anomaly stones, and those tablets from Samaria have some have some common elements. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to look into that. That's got my curiosity now. Yeah, normally are primarily made of soapstone, although some are made of granite. And I'm looking at one here that's uh, made of a more of a, uh, of a what we call an iron stone or sedimentary stone. And some may be of meteoric content. Do you intend to go back out in the field, like out into those regions? Uh, I'm 62 years old, Adam, and the chance of me tra- going into the West African jungle. It's a very treacherous place. Probably not. So what you're saying is I I should do it because I'll do it. (laughs) If I get the capital, I'm going. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, if you go in with the right people and you've got an ad the right uh, approach, you know, it's the, as I said, the movie with Leonardo DiCaprio was the best representation, but it is the opposite of the truth in, in matter. You know, it's one of those movies where a guy goes in with a pistol and takes on the world. Right. Well, if you're going to get in and out of the African jungle, you better go in with uh, what a team, what, what, seal team, better... seal team six. <laughs> yeah, well, no, you, no, there's just not enough. You know, you can't. There's not enough guy. There are millions of natives in the bush. I mean, it's not like we think of Tarzan with 200 people in a tribe. There are millions. So if you want to get in there, you better have respect. And you better treat people right. And you should have charisma. The people like you and want yeah. to see you succeed. And you better have, you know, you've got to have a spiritual connection. Bill was a character. He was tall. He had, he kind of swaggered like he was in the jungle when he walked in America. He had hair down to his, halfway down his back. And just laughed a lot. So you they, know, you could they could tell then. Moving into it. And, you know, when he called me towards the end. Now, he went in for the diamonds. But inevitably, it was the people that captured his heart. He would let me know that when he entered into a village, all the children would come singing and and laughing, and and he would have gifts and food for them. And that's what really captured his heart at the end. And, and uh, so again, it's not a matter of going in and being a tough guy because you know you'll end up you won't be tough for long. Yeah, that that I mean, won't end for any. I mean. <laughs> Then it ruins the entire idea of going there to discover something and be, a, you know, your good spirit's gone at that point. You have to approach it a little bit differently. You have to definitely be a, a mild person. You got to be humble because I would want to discover. I'm, I'm more interested in discovery than I am but any kind of riches. That, I mean, no matter what, it is the most, one of the most dangerous places in the world. There's yeah, it's true. Rebel forces. Everything there. Forget people, the animals. Just the animals and the, you know, what Bill. Over the years, he caught uh, malaria. He was oh yeah, I didn't factor that. Carrier. He had uh, dehydration. Those were the matters that you know, getting food and finding clean water. Those are the matters that uh, that can get you too. But at the same point in time, as we know, their rebel forces are very powerful, and they don't have uh, um, any allegiance to any particular law. I mean, it's, it's you're out there, and it's they're out there for their better interest, however it comes. Yeah, and if you're, if you know, it's it's a, uh, they don't. If you go in there for the as a government operative, it's they're not going to retrieve your body if you don't come back out. You know, there's not going to be any of that. It's not sending people in for you. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fact. Well, and that's the reason why people like ancient aliens and those people, God bless them, they do a great show. But when they go to a country, they go and they have a handler there, a fixer. And that person picks them up at the airport and they go to a hotel and they go out to the places where the tourists go and then they come back and eat a nice dinner. Well, that's not going into the jungle of right. Sierra Leone. You know, you're, it's not, it's not going to be like that. So, um, I mean, I could see myself going in at some point in time now, especially not being uh, involved in any of the skullduggery and the serendipity or the... Uh, uh, you know, I'd spoken to some uh, a couple people uh, on, regarding the crystal skulls. Yes, and um, I heard some pretty fantastic stuff. 
as, as far as like um with, with something with sound waves and magnetics and i hear that and i think about the, the stones that you're referencing there's got to be something that's a new approach for science we have to have a new approach something's got to be we got to try something different because otherwise it's going to be i think it gets disregarded because they think it's fantastic right so it's a fantastic story they're not giving it the the a, a proper perspective look at well, like you said that other camera they're using you're finding new things. I mean, technology is advancing and we'll be soon be able to see things we would otherwise not be able to. I think we should give it another shot with that stuff. I don't know. Yeah, I agree. It'd be very interesting to hook people up to whatever biofeedback or whatever machines you want to and whatever cameras pick up their temperatures and their auras, all that, and then introduce a healing stone and see what happens because we don't know. But all we know is that it's never been done before. I'll tell you what appeals to America. If you have a stone that had, that gives them good luck, that's incentive. They'll grab mm -hmm. that in a heartbeat. <laughs> like you couldn't sell enough of those. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean. Well, what is good luck? You know, that's the question. And it's very possible that anytime we get in tune with something that aligns us to the universal flow, our chances of having good luck or much better when we're riding the wave instead of fighting the tide. Right. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I kind of think luck, something you manifest, right? You, you have to, you have to really strive hard to have it uh, other. Cause so far everyone I've like people I named earlier athletes or billionaires. I've never heard a story of a, of a major athlete or a billionaire say, oh, I just fell, just fell in my lap. Like they get out there and they do it. And even if they came for money, they don't stop trying to make more. They're, 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 there's, they don't have like a complacent place they're sitting in. Not one of them. Well, they, I think a combination oftentimes is they expect that they're going to be lucky. And the other part is that old saying that I'm a very lucky man. The harder I work, the luckier I get. Yeah. So, I mean, they're, they're, they're manifesting it. I mean, you have to believe that. Well, before we close out, is there anything you want to add? Well, I just want to... I'll let you know how much we appreciate you being part of the No Mali Rise. And I want to ask you this question, which I often wonder is about myself, is did you choose the stones or did the stones choose Adam Rodriguez? Well, it's real simple. I read a little bit about him, and, yeah, I think they chose me because now I can't stop researching it. So much so that uh, post podcast, we're talking about me getting some. So, <laughs> yeah, well, we're going to put one in your hands, and you can be part of that. Yeah, I'm going to be part of that people. study. I'm going to try it. Yes. Look, I'm, I, I'm not one of these people that walk around with filters on. I, if I'm going to learn, filters have to be off. You have to see see everything as is, and then learn more than. Because if you approach something saying, "Nah, that's crazy," you never know. And I, I'm not one of these people that want to sit around saying, "Well, I, I guess I'll never know." I want to know, <laughs> so. Yeah, and I anticipate that there are many people within your circle, again, listening right now who also are the type who want to be on the front end and want to do something different, not not do another look at the pyramids. Pyramids are great, but, you know, we don't need the 300th time to look at the pyramids with another guy walking to them. You know, there are people out there who want to do something that nobody else has ever done. They want to be on the, on the cutting edge, the forefront of discovery. And this is the opportunity unlike any other I know. I mean, these figurines, not only are they artifacts and powerful, but unlike most from around the world, they're available. And one of the reasons is because they're found randomly in the jungle and not in burial sites and temples because, you know, when those things, when they're found in those places, they're, they're not allowed to be acquired because they're, they're part of that, um, you know, the burial yeah, t typically in burial ch chambers and and uh, and tombs, those were desired objects by the person that was in there. They they almost almost rarely are there something significantly great about them. They're like you know, the Egyptian pharaohs had gold around them, and they had depictions of their animals and boats. But these stones, uh, again, the more I read about them, the the more it. Whenever I read a lot about something, and I still walk away with a question mark. Mm -hmm. I'm intrigued. I want to know. When they found them, again, unlike those where they were specifically there to go along with the spirits of the departed or to stay with the temple, these were found randomly buried in the jungle. No one knows who buried them or how long ago. And it's 
Yeah, that's uh, the point. I mean, it's they were buried so somebody could find them. Yeah, it's mysterious. That's the mysterious part of that. Like I haven't read about anything that like they, they, we didn't break. Like some archaeologist didn't break down some chamber door and there's a stash. They're pretty spread out. Yes, and that's what I find intriguing. Like that's <laughs> you know you're talking about the well, vastness. One of the, beliefs, uh, one of the theories, of course, there's a couple of theories. One that was about or was spoken about in Walter Edmonds' book was that there was a belief that long before the Egyptian pyramids came into existence, that there was a civilization that predated that in West Africa that had great pyramids. And they sent uh, emissaries out to Egypt and, and taught them how to build the pyramids. And that that, that uh, civilization was absorbed back into the jungle whether it was part of what they call Atlantis or whether it was after that and it was destroyed by an ice age, it's a variety of opinions, but that, that when some of these people went from West Africa to Egypt, when they passed away, that these figurines were carved because they couldn't get the bodies back. Normally they would get the bodies uh, back yep. and they would then bury these in the ground. Now the other one of the other theories is one of the other uh, things that I've heard is that they are believed to be focal points planted in the ground as a connection, if you will, vision a laser beam, if you will, from the human beings. The energy goes into the ground and then connects up to their ancestors and to the Nomali gods. So they are energy focal points. And I always think of the Paul Simon song. These are the days of lasers in the jungle. Lasers in the jungle somewhere. Staccato signals of constant information. A loose affiliation with millionaires and billionaires and babies. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. These are the days of wonders and miracles. You know, to your point, too, uh, think about when they, I was reading some time ago about the, the Mayans uh, and some of the other things that they found, like when you say absorbed by the jungle, like some we discovered these large, large uh, monuments buried in jungle. We didn't even know they were there. Even in China, they found these big mounds, which turned out to be pyramids. They were buried, like legit. I think in that case, purposely buried to hide the tombs. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I also don't think that the Egyptian, I don't think the pyramids and, and the Sphinx are six, 3,000, 6,000. I think they're well older than that. If you look at the head of the, the Sphinx, you can't tell me that's a natural head for that. That's that's crazy. It's not it's not proportioned right. It's well smaller than what the body of that creature is. I, I think that was altered by man. Maybe all right, so the Egyptians altered that, right? It yeah, had to be so something they, larger. To add to that, for forget because I have ADD, it's probably no story. But anyways, the <laughs> uh, the uh, the gene geologically they have identified that the dogon were connected to the ancient egyptians so the primary the most popular theory is that the egyptians spread out into the mali area and then became the dogons but there is again the theory that the dogons existed first and that they went over to egypt huh. and carried the knowledge which with them which they have received from the gods, of course. That's interesting facts. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna read more about it. I, uh, we're obviously gonna talk again because I got to learn more. And then you know, I, I try to make it a habit to know very little about my guests, and then kind of like talk and then learn about one another. I, I like that that approach. Uh, in this case, there's a lot for me to read about. A lot. Well, I've done the same thing. I mean, I'm the world's foremost uh, expert on Nomali, and I know about nothing. But I'm the only guy talking about them, so that makes me the foremost expert. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to know much if, if no one else knows anything. That's good. That's it. That's it. That's so, it. so you're now about to, you know, you're up in the top 10, maybe foremost experts in them all already. Just, well, good. I'm going to read yeah, about yeah. it, talk about it, and hopefully I'll become a master, right? <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to, you know, seeing you, seeing what happens as you uh, add your your energy to the to the experiment. Oh, I'm gonna trust me. I'm gonna do it. So I gotta learn. Ben, it's been a pleasure. Uh, we will definitely do this again. Thank you. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's to all of your listeners out there. Merry and Christmas to ben. the world of Nomali. <laughs> and I'm, I'm excited to be in it. Have a good night, Ben. Bye.